guys welcome to my channel it is Christian here thank you guys so much for joining me today so we are back with another installment of foundation Friday and we are trying out another brand new foundation to the market today we are testing out the new Laura Mercier foundation and this is the Laura Mercier flawless fusion ultra long wear foundation and I do have mine in the shade two in one cashew this foundation I want to say just hit the market maybe a week or two so it is super super new and just as a little bit of a spoiler, you guys, so far, I'm really, really enjoying this, like, a lot. So, if you are new to my channel, you guys, Foundation Friday is where we test out a new foundation every single week here on my channel. I will leave my playlist down below. In my playlist, I tend to go through the type of foundations I'm looking for, what type of skin type I have, and things like that. Chances are, if it's a new foundation, you will probably find it in that description box down below. If you guys love foundation to wear tests and just checking out and seeing how new foundations are going to wear throughout the day for somebody who has a little bit more dry, sensitive, slightly oily skin, like combo oily with a little like a, with a splash of oil. So you guys are definitely in the right place. You are definitely going to want to go ahead and keep on watching. But before I get into that video, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below if you are new to my channel. And if you were not new to my channel, you guys, welcome back. Thank you for continuing to join and support. And if you want to see how this Laura Mercier foundation is going to wear throughout the day, then let's just go ahead and get on into it. This week we are testing out the new Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Foundation. I ordered mine directly off of Sephora's website. It does come in 20 different shades and it retails for $48. The shade range is from 1 into Vanilla, which is for fair to light skin tones with neutral undertones. And then it ranges all the way up to 6 in 1 Truffle, which is for deep skin tones with neutral undertones. This, like I mentioned, is a brand new foundation from Laura Mercier. I typically in the past have never been excited or really cared for Laura Mercier's packaging or not packaging that's irrelevant um her, the foundations that Laura Mercier has come out with in the past I've heard really good things about the what is it the BB cream CC cream tinted moisturizer one of those I've heard really great things about that this is what the packaging of the product looks like it does have a frosted glass packaging and it is and it does as you guys can see come with a pump and it's not that it matters but it's also like really flat I don't know what that has anything to do with anything I'm quickly gonna read off what this foundation claims to do off of sephora.com it is a medium to full coverage it will work for sensitive normal dry combination and oily so pretty much everybody it does provide a matte finish it says it's a 15 hour it is a 15 hour long wearing oil free and transfer resistant liquid foundation with a matte weightless finish with medium to full coverage get lasting wear and all the coverage without the weight the oil free foundation is formulated with skin fusion technology to seal it in place for up to 15 hour performance it's comfortable wear that's transfer sweat humidity and water resistant okay I live in Texas so I definitely will be able to test out that humidity theory today it says coated pigments glide on to create buildable medium to full color that beautifully evens out your skin tone with color that stays true and wears evenly so that kind of means that it should not oxidize the matte finish is never dull flat or cakey and it admit and it minimizes imperfections with silky fine powders help control oil immediately and throughout the day weightless texture looks fits and feels like second skin it's ideal for all skin types especially normally normal to oily it says it's good for all skin types but the fact that it specifies that it's really good for oily and normal kind of makes me a little bit nervous you guys know my skin does lean a little bit dry with a little bit of oil in the t-zone especially in my nose area so we're going to test this out as always half of my face with the beauty blender half of my face with a sponge and I use the normal primers just to give the foundation as fair of a chance as possible. I have a few on rotation for Foundation Friday. Today we did the Hangover RX by Too Faced. And I'm still loving the Tarte Clean Slate Smoothing Primer. I've been using this constantly. I've really, really been loving this stuff. So today will be a really good day to test out the foundation because my skin, it's not sunburned or anything, but for some reason my retinas is really, really flaring up today. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We're going to take my Sigma F80 on this half of my face and as always the Beauty Blender on this half of the face. So it doesn't feel liquidy or it doesn't sound liquidy. I'm sorry, I, I didn't tell you guys what shade I picked mine up. I picked mine up in the shade 2-in-1 Cashew and let's see, what is that shade? That is the sixth lightest shade in the range and so 2-in-1 Cashew is light with neutral undertones. So ordering online, you guys know, ordering foundations online for me is always a struggle. I do have lighter skin and I do have, I do prefer a neutral undertone foundation. So let's hope for the best. Let's go ahead and squeeze a little bit out here. 
it's not as thick as I would have expected it to be because you can see it is a little bit thicker but it is running slightly down my arm so it's not it's not overly liquidy but it's not like a mousse either which a lot of full coverage foundations a lot of times tend to be so I'm gonna take and the color match looks like it's gonna be okay so we're gonna take a couple of dots or a lot of dots so this will be a really good test of the full coverage of this foundation especially since my skin is so red today. My Sigma F80. That is pretty good coverage right out of the gate, you guys. Even this little guy is almost completely covered up. All of my redness is pretty much gone. I think that looks pretty good, you guys. We're going to take a little bit more. And where I still have a little bit of redness peeking through, let's try to build it up right there. It dries down pretty quickly. And it makes it a little bit harder to blend out. It's already drying on the skin, you guys. You're probably going to have to work fast with this. So do one section at a time when you blend. Don't add it all to your face at one time because then it might stick and make it harder to blend. If you tend to work in sections the way that I do. That's pretty good coverage, you guys. There is still a little bit of redness peeking through on the cheeks right here. But I don't want to add any more because A, I don't want things to get too heavy, too full coverage, too cakey. Um, I think that the finish is nice, you guys. It doesn't feel overly matte, but it is, it's drying down super fast. So, not bad at all. And the color match, I'm proud of myself. I got a pretty good color match online. Alright, now I have, my, I have my Dampened Beauty Blender. Let's take a little bit more. I have a lot of active breakouts right now. I just used the Drunk Elephant uh, Sakari, whatever that thing is called, and it brought, a lot of, it brought a lot of stuff up to the surface. So for some reason, I always break out on this side of my face and never really bad on this side of my face. Okay, the Beauty Blender is blending this foundation super nice. It's actually not really taking down a lot of the coverage either. It's kind of sticking in certain areas though. Like right here, can you guys see that? It's not wanting to blend out like it's staying because it dries really fast. So you have to kind of work fast. Yeah. Okay, with this foundation you definitely, even what I just did, applying it half of my face at a time, but applying the foundation all over each half of the face, I wouldn't even recommend doing that. I would recommend working in small sections. So if you're going to start with your chin, then go up to your cheeks, then go up to your forehead. That's how I would apply this foundation because it, see, now that it's kind of drying down, you guys can kind of see how it's sticking. I think a brush will be a little bit easier to blend that out. So let me kind of take a brush to kind of work that product out a little bit. Yeah, it looks good with the Beauty Blender, but a brush is definitely easier to kind of smooth out the edges. I took the brush to the parts where it was kind of sticking and it blended out no problem. I'm still going to say that I think I prefer it with a brush better. Um, let me try to, because there is a little bit of discrepancy. So we're going to take a little bit more to see if we can build the coverage up down here. This time I'm just going to add a little bit at a, at a time. This looks nice on the skin. You guys, I am really happy with the way that this is looking on the skin. There's a little bit of redness still left right here, but I'll just cover that up with concealer because I don't want to go in it too heavy right in this area where I do tend to get a little bit more, where my fine lines tend to get very, very dry and very flaky and I don't want a full coverage foundation to sink in too much in that area. So I'll just go in with a little bit of a concealer right there. But this, my, I mean, my eyes are super watery for some reason today. I don't know why, but... This looks nice, you guys. I like it. I'm definitely starting to feel it dry down. Like, I'm feeling it. It's becoming more matte, and I can feel it. But my face, with the exception of where the retinas is still peeking through a little bit, my face feels super airbrushed. It doesn't feel tacky, so if you don't want to set it, I feel like you don't need to. 
And if you have drier skin, I probably wouldn't even recommend setting it because that might take it too far into the matte realm and then it might not work out for you guys. I like it. The only thing I'm, um, I'm upset about is that I started filming this video so late that I'm not really going to be able to test out the 15 hour wear because it is currently, it's currently 1251 so I'll probably only get 8 or 9 hours use out of this one today. I like it you guys. I'm going to go ahead and of course finish the rest of my makeup off camera like always and then I will be back in a little bit letting you guys know how I feel about the foundation but so far I like it. Hopefully this is a good one because it looks really, really freaking nice on the skin right now. So I will be back in a little bit you guys. All right guys, and I am back. It is about 2.30, so it did take me a little bit to get my life together today. I it took a little bit longer to do my makeup because I really wanted to play with the Jaclyn Hill palette. It is the first time I put that on that particular palette on my eyes. I really wanted to take my time really, really playing with that today. So I do quickly wanna say I love this foundation, you guys. I think it looks so freaking good on the skin. Like I think I'm having one of the best makeup days I've had in such a long time. Like. I'm living for it right now. When I put the foundation on, I honestly let the foundation sit on my skin for like a good hour because I went in with my eye makeup and then I went in with brows and I was loving the way my eye makeup brows and everything was looking and then I went in with the Tarte Shape Tape and for some reason lately, you guys, I have not been loving the Tarte Shape Tape. I was loving this makeup look so much and then I went in with the Tarte Shape Tape and I was so upset because it kind of dried my, it makes my skin look a little bit dry. And then I went in with the shape tape and then things got a little bit dry. Luckily I was able to kind of really blend it out, but my under eyes do look really dry. As far as this foundation goes, I'm living for it, you guys. I think it looks so freaking good on the skin. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel cakey, it doesn't feel, it, it's a teeny drying, like a teeny tiny teeny bit drying. But nothing unbearable there are those matte foundations that when I put on like I just want to scratch you know the makeup off of my face because it feels so uncomfortable and so dry I'm not having that kind of feeling right now you guys right now you guys I think it looks so good on the skin I think it feels it mostly feels drying like right in my chin area everywhere else kind of feels okay it looks okay the rest of my face looks perfectly fine my smile lines look perfectly fine. My pores look good. Everything, like, I feel so good with this foundation on you guys right now. I really, really, really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in. We're going to go about the rest of my day. And then I, the next time I will be checking in will be in natural daylight. You guys know the drill. So natural daylight and then my final check-in at the end of the night. But if this foundation continues to hold up the way it's looking right now, I think I will have found a new favorite. So keep our fingers crossed. Let's hope for the best. I did not put on any concealer and I did apply a little bit of powder, you guys, just where I was gonna put the bronzer and the highlight. There is no powder. Oh, and I put a little bit on my nose because you guys know that my nose is the first thing to get oily. No powder on my forehead, no powder on my chin. I literally, no powder like in this area at all where my smile lines tend to get dry. I only put powder like from my cheeks back just help bronzer and everything else blend smoothly this doesn't it didn't it doesn't feel tacky anywhere where I did not put powder it just feels nice on the skin you guys I'm so in it I feel like it looks nice so let me go ahead and zoom you guys in all right guys so that is the side that I applied with the brush and that is the side that we applied with the beauty blender I think it looks really nice I've had the foundation on now probably for about, what, an hour and a half or so, roughly, and it has maybe even two hours. It has, I have not noticed any oxidizing. It is true to the color when I originally put it on. I did not go in and spot conceal. Had I spot concealed, I know I could have gotten these little guys covered, um, but it wasn't a big deal to me. I think that it looks, it looks like a full coverage foundation, but I think that it looks still nice on the skin. Like, it looks healthy. I'm so into it, you guys. I think it looks good. My, uh, I put very light layer of bronzer on. You can still see my discoloration a little bit because I did not color correct at all today because I was just kind of like, wow, this foundation looks so good. Like, I just didn't want to do anything else to it. But it's not, like, it did a decent job color. It did a decent job coloring my discoloration, but it's still there a little bit. Um, and nothing looks cakey. Nothing looks dry. Nothing looks flaky. Everything, all of the redness for the most part is pretty much covered up. I see a little tiny bit peeking through like right here. I'm so happy with it, you guys. I'm so excited. So I will check back in with you guys in a couple of hours. And hopefully this is still wearing really beautifully, you guys. So I will keep you updated. And yeah, I'll see you back here in a little bit. Bye, guys. Hi guys. And I am back. It is currently about 6.30. So we've had this foundation on for five to six hours. And I have to say, I feel like I'm having an exceptionally good makeup day. Hopefully this camera does not play me. It makes so 
so good. I just went and had an, a late lunch, early dinner with one of my friends and she was like, your makeup looks so good. Like you look so good right now. Like she just kept telling me how good my makeup looked. And it made me feel really special. I it on minus a little bit of settling in here, but it's not even bad at all. So, all right guys, and I am back. It is a little bit before 10.30. So I sat down and started filming, I want to say around 12.30, right? Probably around 12.30, one o'clock. And I have to say, you guys, I think I might've found a new foundation love. First, I'm gonna say that I do not agree with the 15 hour claim. I don't think it lasts for 15 hours because I've had it on for roughly 10 hours and it has started to break down, which is what I was afraid of because that's usually around hour seven is when foundations usually get really, really bad on me. They'll look flawless for the first six or seven hours, but then whenever it's time to start getting in that sh long stretch, that's when my dry skin really starts to peek through. That's when my skin will start to get irritated and things will start to just not look the best on my skin. However, I like this foundation. I don't know what happened on my forehead. I'm not sure if it's from where I was blending with the beauty blender and then half of the face with the brush, but it's like there's like a line just going up my forehead that I did not notice earlier today. I just noticed it maybe like an hour or two ago. So I don't know if maybe I rubbed some of the foundation off and it moved or if it's been there all day and I just never noticed it or maybe it's just gotten worse. That's a little weird. This foundation never got drying on my skin as far as the feeling. It never felt dry on the skin. If you have dry skin, I would probably say stay away from it. My smile lines do look really bad. I will say that, but that is the only place on my face that looks bad. And my smile lines, Lord, when I tell you that I just want to get filler or Botox, like that's real life at this point. Um, everywhere else on my face, with the exception of what happened, I don't know what happened right here. I'm not sure. Everywhere else looks really, really good. I did not get overly oily. I mean, there's a little bit of oil, but nothing too bad. Um, the foundation did not move at all. I feel like it still has the same full coverage that it had this morning. No more redness is peeking through. My pores still look really nice. It is just the forehead right here and the smile lines that are kind of like, oh man, like why do you, why did you have to mess me up though? You know what I mean? So I'm, I like it, you guys. I like it. I think like my smile lines, that's just something that I'm just going to have to learn how to deal with. And there has to be like a little bit of give when it comes to my smile lines. As far as some foundations make them look really, really bad. Some foundations I'm kind of like, mm. because up until about hour seven-ish, seven, eight, I feel like this foundation looked flawless on my skin. And so eight hours of wear for me is pretty good. Nothing looks cakey. Nothing looks bunched up. Let me go ahead and zoom you guys in so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but that doesn't look like the foundation. Like it looks like I must have rubbed something on my head. I'm not sure what that is because that is not something that a foundation would just do. Like it looks like maybe I scratched myself and I just didn't notice. I don't know, but that's the only place where it just looks really freaking weird. And then of course my smile lines a little bit. It does look a little bit dry like right here in this region and my smile lines. But look at the rest of the skin, you guys. I mean, you guys already know, you've been around my channel for a while that that's my problem area. Look at the rest of my skin. None of the, no more, I, I did not conceal because I didn't feel the need to conceal. No, like the redness is not peeking through any more than it did. My bronzer, my highlight, my contour still is 100% on. Like it looks like the minute I put it on and I think that that foundation has something to do with that. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know. I just wish I knew what happened right here because I don't, because it's only that spot, but like that's not somewhere where foundation would normally move away. You know what I mean? So I think that I must have just done something. Overall, I think I had a really good makeup day today. I really like this foundation. I give this foundation two thumbs up. This is the first foundation that I've been like, yes, excited about since Foundation Friday. I mean, I like the Elsie foundation. I like that one a lot. I thought that one was pretty good. Um, but this one, I just, it gives me, it gives me the exact amount of coverage I need without looking too overly done, too cakey, too heavy. And it gives me that full coverage. So yes, it looks like I'm wearing makeup, but it's not like a full on mask. I'm into it right now, you guys. So I will keep you updated down in the description box below. And yeah, you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.